the title of this presentation is the sacroiliac and subtalar joint connection. The ankle bone between the tibia and the fibula and the calcaneus or heel bone is the talus. And so the talus forms a joint with the ankle, which is the upper joint, and then the joint on the bottom of the talus and the heel or calcaneus is called the subtalar joint. The subtalar joint is a very complex joint and uh, it combines movement in all three planes of the body. And I have seen a common thread of people with restricted subtalar joints with a diagnosis of sacroiliac joint dysfunction. And this usually occurs on the side of the body with a functionally shorter leg. And so whenever uh, I evaluate and treat someone with sacroiliac joint dysfunction, I always come down to the foot and ankle and screen it. And um, when the subtalar joint becomes restricted, it assumes what's called a supinatory movement restriction. And what I mean to say is that it has a lack of pronation mobility in the foot and ankle. And rather than belabor the points much, I'm just going to skim over it really briefly to say that the ankle, the, the joint below the ankle becomes very rigid. And the ankle, the joint below the ankle assumes a different position, which effectively lengthens that leg. And this is, of course, due to the fact that the body creates compensations to a primary dysfunction, such as a primary diagnosis of sacroiliac joint dysfunction. So looking at the heel, the heel is supposed to evert, in which the lower part moves outward. This is a right foot and ankle. This is the fibula, the outside bone of the lower leg, and this is the tibia, again, talus and calcaneus. When the subtalar joint becomes rigid, the heel inverts and it also twists inward. And the way to evaluate that is to push the heel outward and twist the heel outward. If the person presents with restricted mobility in the subtalar joint, it's very easy to restore normal mobility by distracting the heel and keeping that distracted for 30 seconds and then twisting it outward and doing 30 repetitions. So I'm going to put my foot and ankle up here and demonstrate how I treat it. make sure the camera angle is appropriate. So if I had restricted motion in my subtalar joint, I would not be able to do this outward movement called eversion, and I would not be able to twist the heel and make the foot come outward, or it would be stiffer compared to the other side of the body. So it would look like this when I'm trying to test eversion, and I'm trying to twist twist it outward, it wouldn't twist, but it most certainly would twist inward, and the heel would also bend sideways inward, okay? So the treatment would be to just hook the heel and push for 30 seconds, and then add a twist, and twist that 30 times. And it's very easy for patients to evaluate themselves, compare sides, and treat the side with a restriction. Again, this is a very common pattern that I see associated with a diagnosis of sacroiliac joint dysfunction and it occurs on the side of the functionally shorter leg and I believe that it's important to treat the whole body and to connect the dots connecting these relationships of the primary dysfunction and the distal compensation and for that reason in all patients with that diagnosis I evaluate and treat when appropriate the subtalar joint. So I hope this has been informative. Uh, thank you very much.